Hi, welcome back to Markets of Sunshine. In today's video, I am going to show you how to make a soft book out of fabric. And this is uh, a new method that I have utilized from making a junk journal. So I hope that you will enjoy this technique and it will inspire you to make your own because I've made another soft book embroidery uh, practice stitch book here on my channel. So a soft book, a fabric book um, for adults, not for children, and you practice your embroidery stitches in it. And we use a slow stitch kit, which is just different pieces of fabric and laces and trims and buttons and embroidery stitches to embellish the pages. So I have already started this book and we're going to go through the process together. It's going to be a three-part series. So today is all about making the pages and adding the hinge piece that I have, um, like I said, come up with that is going to be something very easy for you to do. In junk journaling, we could use paper and cardstock to do it. We could even use fabric. But normally it's um, cardstock that we use. And in a soft fabric book, it would be fabric or felt or uh, flannel. You could do batting with fabric covered on both sides. So come along and join me. And I hope that you will want to stick around for our slow stitching sampler series, which starts in three days, January 1st. And there's a private Facebook group, Slow Stitching Sampler, and you can also sign up, uh, join that as well. My Etsy shop, if you want to, if you don't have a Slow Stitch kit and you want to join us, we're going to start with the Tiny House kit. The pattern is in my shop, and you can pick that up. There's a small kit uh, for under $20, and there is a larger kit that is over $20. So um, either one will work for the project let me see yes okay so this is the small kit and it has the patterns inside there's the stick and stitch paper which is this white one and then I have the card stock pattern for you to cut it out and make the tiny house out of and I also include um, a cut out fabric tiny house that it comes in pieces included in that kit. So the, this is the small kit and the large kit is twice as many supplies that you have in the, in the small kit. And it's in a pink and white theme, but you can use any color fabrics that you want. You can pick up any number of kits in my shop with other colors if you want to do, but we're gonna be starting off with the pink and white tiny house kit. Now today's kit is a new kit and it is a blue and purple soft book kit and I will be incorporating um, a new tiny house pattern in this kit. So it's something, it's really, oh my goodness, I'm so excited about it. I know, know you will be too. So come on over to my crafting table and let me show you and let's get started. Okay, so here we are at my craft table. And I want to show you the pages first. So I made five pages and I used felt, purple felt and blue felt for the pages. And I first cut out the felt and then I cut fabric. So this is a six by six inch block and then I cut out fabric that I wanted to use in a purple and blue theme and some laces and pen these into place. This is one of my slow stitch kits, um, the Laura Lee Designs um, fabrics and I have a couple of kits in my shop with her design. So cute, very whimsical, garden, farm girl kind of um, themes. So that's the first page. The second page 
I'm using a fabric. Uh, my friend Rita from Georgia came down here on a cruise and then she bagged up all of her fabrics and gave them to me, gifted them to me. Wasn't that so loving? And so this fabric here was in the bag that she, that she brought me. There's so many, I don't even, that'll be another day that I'll share all those with you. And um, so this is one I decided to do the same fabric on both sides. So I just need to um, embellish this more with laces and other fabric pieces. But that's kind of just going to be like a foundation background piece. And then here's the blue felt. And here's some of the fabrics that I put on here. Some blue and purple going on with these. I love these batiks that I used there. That's page three. And now here is page four and five. These are both in a blue theme. And so this is the hinge method that I'm going to show you today. So you open it up. It lays flat. And unlike my pink slow stitch book, um, the pages are a little uh, tighter in that book, but I wanted something that gave a little more flexibility. So here's a lace pocket on this page, and here is a fabric pocket on this page. And then let me turn it over, and then I put a fabric waterfall page. So in junk journaling, if you're familiar with that term, or maybe even in scrapbooking, they I think we can utilize, I've, I have in my scrapbooks, I put in waterfall pages. And that just means a stack of pages, in this case, a stack of fabric, and you just flip them. So I will be putting laces and trims and other fabric pieces on here and then these are, this is going to be a little mini slow stitching page. So then I will do embroidery stitching and putting, put buttons. I put two pieces of lace here. And then I just stitched those together and stitched it to the book page. And then all of this is going to be for adding more lace and buttons as well. The same thing with this page. So here's one of, um, this is one of my kits in my shop has this purple and blue butterfly in the kit. There's four of these kits left in my shop, so if you love blue and purple, go and pick up one of those. And then I've incorporated new and vintage fabrics in this uh, project. So this will become a kit in my shop uh, eventually, but I'm working on the slow stitching sampler series, and so I'm wanting to concentrate more on that. So as soon as I get this kit um, put together and in the shop, then I will let you know here on my channel. But isn't this adorable? Absolutely beautiful. I love these pockets. So in this pocket is going to go a small little journal and in here is going to go a small little journal. So then I will incorporate my junk journaling techniques, journal making in this as well. So now to make this hinge piece, I cut a piece of felt and it measures six and a quarter inches long and one and a half inches wide. And the two pages were six inches. So, but six and a quarter is what the height of this is. So just a little taller and then one and a half inches wide. And I laid the pages down flat, put the piece of felt on top, pinned it into place, top and bottom, decided how much did I want to overlap onto the page. And on this, these two pages, I did not want to cover up this trim here. So that's why I decided to do it on the other side. And then on this page, I didn't want to run into the waterfall feature. So that's why it was perfect for these other pages. So now what I will do when I get to the point of being able to hinge these pages, 
then what I thought I would do is go ahead and I'm going to put the piece of felt hinge onto them first. And that way I can decorate over the top of that hinge and it won't cover up anything that, that I want to keep. So, and then this page, I might go ahead and add another page which obviously I would need to. So instead of, so that would be six pages, actually it's going to be in my little soft book. So then I will take a, either another blue piece just to show you, okay, lay it down like this. Let me get this one out of the way. And let me just show you how much you have extra showing and then this is what we're going to be using to stitch to the whole spine piece that is going to cover up all these so these are just our hinges these are not the spine okay so let's just put it like this just to show you for demonstration purposes okay all right then we know, okay, we want this to be even at the bottom, lay it on, decide about a quarter of an inch, let's just say. And that there. And then lift this up, look over here. That looks to be about a quarter of an inch as well. So once you get the top attached, now you can come and pin it to the bottom and it's a little more stable. Okay, let me turn it over. Okay, now we're able to see how much we came in. So up here it looks like I came in a little more so I can just adjust that. So this one here, turn it back over, pull it out a little bit. This needs to be trimmed a little bit. There we go. All right, and then this, let's straighten this up. All right, now, and then what I would proceed to do is go ahead and I would trim this off and then get my needle and thread. And I like to come behind this piece here and then attach it and then I will stitch all the way down this side and then cut it off and then come and stitch all the way down this side. And when I get to the end, I reinforce it several times. So I go in this corner when I get, you know, finish it off about three or four times, start it off three or four times, and then stitch. And you see I came close together. Some On this side, the stitches were more even, consistent, same size. This size, I kind of was all over the place at the size of the stitches, but that's okay. All right, and then so the felt that's facing the outside of your page, that is going to be the side that you want on top and then the side the piece that is not on top is what you want on the inside so i hope that is understandable and again so then this piece will be here so this will be hinged here and then the next set will be together and then this will be hinged here and then the last set together 
and then these will be hinged here. And then I will take and make a spine piece and wrap it around. So it will start here, wrap it around here, come even with this piece, come even with this piece. And then the first page will be stitched to that spine piece. But for right now, all you need to start off with is making six by six inch felt pages. Decorate the pages however you want with the fabric choices, the color choices, whatever you want to do. That is up to you. And get those six pages completed. After you have those completed, then cut your hinge piece six and a quarter by one and a half. Leave a, about a quarter inch, stitch those down on both sides and get this those stacked up together. So this is step one. So step one is really just cutting your six pages and decorating the pages. That's just step one. And let's say day one. Day two, then work on your hinges. Now if you want to complete two pages, make your hinge, then that set is completed. Let's do that. Decorate two pages, cut your hinge, sew it on. Okay, that stack is done and then stuff that over to the side and then you get the next two pages and you decorate those two and then you cut the hinge for that page and you get those that sewn into place okay and then you set that aside so that could be day two and then day three is your last set of two and once those are completed then come back here to my channel and then I will show you how to make that spine piece and we'll attach that and then the last step will be the cover. So step part two is going to be making the spine piece and attaching it. Day three, part three is going to be um, making the cover and attaching it. Okay, so trying to keep it short and sweet and easy for you guys uh, to follow along and to make. These are, it's really super easy to make and I know you're really going to enjoy your book once you've done it. And then um, practicing your embroidery stitches on the pages is really going to be a lot of fun. So I love my uh, soft book. And it just, so I have a pink and pink one now, pink and white theme. I have the blue, um, uh, purple, and then this one is more blue and purple. So the other one is like really more uh, purple, but this one I went blue and purple and this one, but the cover is going to be a blue, more toward the blue theme. <clears throat> so thank you for being here with me today, and I look forward to seeing you in part two video. And if you are joining the Slow Stitching Sampler, then I will see you January 1st. Um, we will be beginning that series. So stay safe, keep creating in the sunshine, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.